got three guys in here all playing air guitar at the same time. Unbelievable. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, joining me now are two gentlemen who I have worked with and competed against almost my entire radio career, and I'm very proud to call both of them friends of mine. And it, uh, let me introduce you now, reintroduce you to friends of yours, Bob Coburn and Joe Benson. Guys, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Jim. Nice to be here. Me too. Thank you for having us in. It's my pleasure. Uh, first off, uh, we were talking a little earlier that when KMET went away, Joe, you were kind enough to uh, have all the jocks come down to your show, and we were able to kind of uh, say our goodbyes, which mm -hmm. we weren't able to do on the station. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it was real fitting that you get to come in on my show and uh, do this Thank tonight. You. Thank you. I appreciate that opportunity. And uh, I think it was 11 or 12 years ago when I was working with you, I loaned you a Vangelis album. And, Jim, I haven't gotten that back yet. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh gee. Oh. That little 5-2. Oh, I think it was and You know what? The, the sick thing is, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's pathetic, that, isn't it? That's disgusting. That's a mind like Velcro. Crow. Oh, man. Uh, that just, <laughs> I mean. No, I, I don't even remember what I was doing, you know, 11 years ago, much less what someone else was doing, for God's sake. And at this point, 1994, who the hell is Vangelis? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but I never forget. Okay, no, so. no. You know, you think all those exhaust fumes from that racing would have kind of clouded that memory of yours, but apparently not. Thank you. <laughs> this looks dangerous, gentlemen, the three of us sitting yeah. here. I want you to know that. Yeah. This looks dangerous. Well, we could tell Downs is here. You saw the stuffed sheep out in the hallway. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we could tell Downs is Downs here. Was, but... Downs was physically weeping on the air. Uh, no, he was. He was. He was. Oh. He was broken up. I said, but then I said, would you like to stick around and see the guys? Oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, man, Frazier's on at nine. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Thanks, exactly. Steve. No yeah. respect, I tell you. Well, let's uh, get in into as much or little detail as you want. But I think people who may not know why you are not a KLOS would like to know. So who wants to take that one? I was hoping you could tell us why. <laughs> <laughs> um, they never I, tell the guy that's uh, gone. Do they? It's true. We're always the last to know. I, I think in a nutshell, they wanted to uh, uh, stake out in a different direction, and they felt that we were not part of that direction. That's as succinctly as you can put it. You can get into the ramifications of what that means and why they came to that decision. But I don't know if I can honestly answer that. I think that's in their mind. They made the choice. Uh, I always said about KLOS, the only time I'm going to leave is when they ask me to, and they ask yeah. me to, so yeah. I'm out of there. What about you, John? Uh, exactly the same thing, and I would say that the audience that we've come to know over the past 712 years uh, is an audience <laughs> that uh, they really weren't uh, interested in, or they're going a different direction now, so uh, the people we become friends with, that's a different group now, I guess. Uh, okay, now I know you guys are, are too gentlemanly to say it, so I'm going to. The idea that they want to go in a different musical direction, as long as it's in the rock genre, and apparently newer rock, in quotes, without you guys, I think is ridiculous. I mean, we, because you, it's, you guys have always been on the cutting edge of what's going on musically. You certainly could play this music. There is no... Thank There's you. no reason in the world that you can't uh, play this, and you probably found it before the programming department over there, most of these bands anyway. Well, I, I have stayed current over the years, as I know yeah. that Joe has as, as well, and I think that indeed we could have played that music and were playing it, and in the latest ratings trend, the 18-34 to 34 target that they are after was up about 50% for the radio station. Right. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding what they told me anyway. Uh, they have done research. They said that Joe and I both tested well. We're familiar within the marketplace. People like what we do. Mm -hmm. We were too associated with KLOS. <laughs> and I thought, well, well, damn. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now, see, I was how the hell they arrive at that? I you know? thought that's what I was supposed to do. Yeah. So that was just, you know. And I think they want to make a departure from what KLOS was and make a statement that was something new. They said to me that they even thought of changing call letters. Mm -hmm. So we're perceived as part of the past, part of the old, and they want to establish essentially a new radio station. And mm -hmm. that did not include us. But that, but again, I, now I want to just because it's so, this is such a, a, a great example of how radio thinks. And not just KLOS and its management, but radio, radio in general. general things. And they don't listen to the radio. They don't think radio. They're reading charts and graphs and pie charts and stuff. So, I mean, this d doesn't make any logic. I mean, you know, here we have two of the best-known jocks in all of Southern California, all time. I know what we'll do. Let's get rid of them. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> And the, the lesson for anybody who's thinking about getting into the business is that we all sign temporary employee timesheets. Yes. And uh, yes. we're expendable in the uh, big picture of that. Yeah. But uh, that's not whatever has driven myself or uh, Bob. I mean, we want to win, and you too, Jim, for as long as I've known you. There's always sure. you want to be there. Um, I've always, uh, I get great pleasure out of speaking with people and going out and meeting them and uh, playing music that can affect people's lives and, 
And if the music is the background in your life, then I like to be able to at least play things in the background. Occasionally, if it snaps you out and go, whoa, what was that? Uh, to me, that's the biggest kick I can get. And I've, God knows I've tried just about every other kick there is in radio, and that's one of my favorite, getting to know people and getting to be people, part of people's lives and whatnot. And, you know, so far nobody's loaned me any money for it, but it's like... <laughs> and don't hold your breath either, Joe, believe me. Um, you know, you, you hit on a good point. To me, being on the radio is going in and playing music, uh, trying to be as, as soulful as you can without mm -hmm. being uh, corny or maudlin or anything on the air, and, and, and connecting with the audience there. And the people who program radio and run radio, to them, radio is, well, we need more in the P2 and P3 fringe. And I checked on the selector, and the duopoly over in the Metroplex did this. And yeah. it's all this terminology, and everything's bracketed and formatted. To us, it's go in, turn on the microphone, do what you can, crank the music loud, and have a good time. To yeah. them, it's demographics, numbers, we need this, and uh, it's a different way of looking at it. Well, I know you two guys personally, and I'm going to uh, be the one to say it, that you guys have forgotten more about rock and roll radio than that place will ever know. You that know, was Jim that said that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I worked there twice. They paid my paycheck twice. I was loyal to them when I worked there, but it is a gigantic company. It's a machine. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But it's not rock. It's a machine, and and to, and and the proof of it is grinding up two human beings with the talent that you have, in that way. Just because they've come up with some other lame brain advert, you know, it's really a marketing deal. <laughs> yeah, you know, Jim. No, it's like uh, I want to say it's like this in any business. One of my uh, research people, Paul, was just uh, blown out about a year ago from I think McDonnell Douglas after he'd been there for fourteen years. And with him, uh, he had an opportunity over a few months to do something. He went to engineering school, and now he's a sound engineer working at the record plant. And it was an opportunity for him. He started at the bottom again and going up. Those things happen. I think in any uh, form of business, I, I can use a racing analogy here for you. Uh, my forte at this point is uh, getting into the car and driving it, doing the PR and lining up everything. But when I get into the car, I don't necessarily want to think. I, I trust the individuals that are tuning the car. So if I get in the drag car and Randy says this is tight, it's going to go, I don't want to think about how the mechanics are running. And when I work for a radio station, I think for the three of us, we like to isolate ourselves uh, somewhat as well, assume that somebody's going to run the business properly. And my job is to go out there and play the music and connect with people because it's pretty hard to run a business and while you're connecting with people, saying, hey, how you doing? You know, how's your life going? How's the kids? You know, how's this stuff? And, Jesus, do we get the uh, P2 rotations? Or, yeah. And, you know, what's ahead? Is there social return? Because you have to, I think uh, everybody has one or two things in life you can do, maybe not at the same time. And I've, uh, it's uh, isolated my part to think that I don't want to know too much about the business. But I, uh, no, I think, that, I think that's a great metaphor, the racing metaphor. But the, the problem is that, look, I'm the last guy in the radio station you want to be handling the dental plan or, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> or the health insurance, you know, negotiations. What the hell happened to your teeth anyway? Exactly. <laughs> you know, what, what, that's because I was in charge of the dental plan for a while. <laughs> uh, so, but, when it, but conversely, uh, but it, somehow it, we see that, you know, because we know we're not, you know, we, that's not what we want to do. But somehow, uh, given the position, everybody thinks they can program. You know, it's like oh, it's yeah. like being an armchair it's, it's quarterback. Well, know, everybody yeah. can be a disc jockey, too. You, know? sure. yeah. you can sit in a room and play music. You know, though, you know all this going into the business, that yeah. being on the radio is much like being a race car driver. There are times you're going to crash and hit the wall, which raises a lot of questions about Thank your you. judgment, Joe. I mean, you're driving cars and you're in radio. I, I, I didn't know you'd seen me. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, B.C. and Uncle Joe are here. This is 97.1 KLSX, and we will return. Right, ninety seven point one KLSX, the classic rock station, and that is Rush and the Spirit of Radio. And if it was ever alive and well, it is tonight in this room. My guests are Joe Benson and Bob Coburn, and we'll be back with them right after this. If you're looking for a part, you don't have to look Son asked me the other day if I was successful. I don't know, I said, admiring the thick, rich head and deep amber color of my Samuel Adams, but I sure love my work. This is 97.1 Kayla Sachs, the classic rock station. My uh, guests are Bob Coburn and Joe Benson and, and Claudia Puig, who's on the phone and now on the air. Hi, Claudia. Oh, hi. How you doing? Good. I didn't realize I was on the air. Well, I should, probably shouldn't have told you and just let you keep talking. 
Now, Claudia is one of the premier writers at the L.A. Times. Uh, she's never written one good syllable about me, but she's all over the phone when you guys are here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I could I could find the cure for cancer. Claudia wouldn't wouldn't give a damn, but Joe and Bob are here, so Something she's on like the phone. About her. Something I read like about her. radio waves. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what did you want to ask these two guys? Well, we were we were talking a little bit about the, the I guess the changes at KLOS. Uh, you know what that whether it's a format change or just a refinement, um, or, or exactly what what is what is the plan and, and why didn't they fit in? I call it a course correction, which to me is is exactly that. It's as if you were sailing someplace you were slightly off course and had to readjust. Uh, essentially, what they have done is drop the Who, the Beatles, and add Pearl Jam and Soundgarden, and uh, that had been happening uh, months previous. Didn't, didn't uh, in the old days, didn't uh, the ships, if there was something wrong, you run into a storm, you throw the cook overboard? Isn't that, isn't that what they used to do back then? What the hell are you talking I about? <laughs> I told you, it's the fumes. It's the exhaust fumes. <laughs> does that answer your question, Claudia? Yes, it does. Okay, go write your column. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, now, do you want to talk to them some more later when we're done? Sure. Okay, good. Thank you. Where's the babysitter, by the way? There is none. That's why we... Oh, would... my oh. God. What's their name? <laughs> Just go ahead and say it over the air. Blanca. Blanca? Yeah, she blanked out on us. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, we'll uh, I'll tell you what, call us back during the next commercials. All right. All right, bye-bye. Right, bye. I have a question for Joe. <laughs> Why do you think Claudia never writes nice things about Jim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, no, it's the editor. Don't. It's the editor every time. Yeah. He just takes it, psh, little it. lines it right out. She's a, she's a very sweet lady. She, she is. has that voice. She's on top of it. She is plugged into the radio industry. In this she time. is. She yeah. knows stuff months before I hear about it. Yes, or we'll tell it, any of it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Claudia, have you heard anything? No. No. <laughs> Next day, the axe. Wham! <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. Uh, don't be buying any houses, guys. Yeah. 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 How about we take some phone calls? I know there's a lot of listeners who would like to talk to you. Is I'd cool? love to. If All you're right. on delay. If you have it. <laughs> Thank you for putting that out there, Joe. Uh, really. I'm uh, scared to death. I uh, really appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> You've got a question for Bob Coburn. Give us a call at 1-800-540-9797. If you got a question for Joe Benson, fax it, okay? <laughs> Jeez, hi, you're on the air. Hey, hello, Jim. Hello, BC. Hello, Uncle Joe. How are you? Hey, good, Jim. good. Um, I heard this morning, I heard uh, what happened this afternoon. It's a sad day for uh, L.A. fans of BC and Uncle Joe. They've been a mainstay in L.A. radio for people's lives in many years. You know, it's not only music that attracts people to certain stations, but I feel personalities like DC and Uncle Joe play a major role in listeners tuning in. I'd like to thank you, too, for many years of professional and witty radio. I hope the best for both of you and your future endeavors. And wherever you might be in your future, your fans will truly follow. Thank you. Oh, that's, nice. that's nice. Very nice. Very nice. And I haven't heard from my brother in years. <laughs> That was well said. Okay. Yeah, it was very oh, well God. said. Yeah. Think you want to add to that before we? Uh... No. Make okay. sure the check goes in the mail on to him. Yeah, Joe's, Joe said, please fill it up and check the oil. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> you know what? I'll throw this out before we take another call. Uh, the thing that I will miss the most is the actual going in and doing it. Yeah. I will miss sitting there 12 to 1 on Monday and doing the Monday Blues. Mm -hmm. I'll miss Nuggets the rest of the week. I'll miss working the format. I'll miss the people that mm -hmm. have been there at KLOS within the building, and uh, especially the people outside who listen because uh, there's no need to do any of this without that final link of people responding to what you're doing in one of these rooms here Absolutely. and that's the part that uh, that will be missed the most the actual mechanics of doing a radio program that that when i was off for the two years that i was uh, away that is exactly what i missed it would come six o'clock or whenever and i would start you know the heating up and getting ready to go and then not having access to the folks that was the worst that was the worst Second was new music. Something would come out I really liked, and I couldn't play it. Oh, man, I can't play that on the I air. hate that. Yeah. I hated that. All right, mm -hmm. let's go to the telephones again. Hi, you're on the air with Bob Coburn and uh, Uncle Joe. Hello? Hello? You got a question for B.C. or Joe? Yeah. Uh, I've been listening to these guys forever, 14 years or so. And uh, when I, I've been waiting for Gino to come back on. He never came back, you know. And all of a sudden, there was no B.C. and no Joe. <laughs> I called in and they said they changed the format. I figured, well, not so much for KLOS. They're going, they're gone, you know. And uh, I just, it's just uh, a big part of me. It seems like it died. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for calling, man. Thank you, um, Bob. You wanted me to play a particular record. Yeah, it's uh, a record that uh, applies to different groups of people as they come up through life. Uh, each generation can lay claim to this song if they want. 
And uh, at, at this point in my life, it took me a long time to realize uh, the main thrust of the song and what it's about. And I don't know if Pete Townsend even knew that when he wrote this song. I uh, hope I die before I get old. And as, as I realize now, what that really means to me reminds me of a line that Satchel Paige, the, the baseball player, had. If you didn't know how old you was, how old would you be? Uh, it's all spirit inside and how you feel about yourself inside. The, the face may change in the mirror slightly every day, but we all came, the three of us, from a certain point in time, and uh, this is our generation. All right. That's very well said, B.C. I like to say, repeat that line again. Uh, if you didn't know how old you was, how old would you be? It's great. It's you know, great. Y- youth and age and all of that, it's all in your head. It really yeah. and truly is. Yeah. Uh, Kayla West wants to go for a younger audience does that mean we're out the door? I guess it does, you know. It's their you know, choice, so not ours. People got to remember that at one time, Bruce Springsteen was a cutting-edge artist. Mm-hmm. At one time, uh, Bob Dylan was, like, brand new. And everybody, you know, goes through that. It, it's this classification uh, nonsense and the stratification that we have now in radio that that is ridiculous because, I mean, you know, someday Pearl Jam is going to be classic rock. Right? That's true, yeah. You know, so. I have a friend who's still upset that Dylan went electric. <laughs> yeah, just can't get past that. Yeah. <laughs> Claudia didn't know that. Uh, no, no. Ooh, okay. We'll be back in just a minute. You're listening to 97.1 Kayla Sex. My guests are Joe Benson, a.k.a. Uncle Joe, and Bob Coburn, who you know as BC, and we'll be back. Tonight's Prime 9 News. From the people at the gas company. Well, James, my producer, just brought in the drinks, and these guys are just running him nuts. You know, Bob had to have the uh, martinis shaken, not stirred. Benson, of course, had to have the tepid tea, not too hot, not too cold. Where's the damn shrimp? Exactly. I want the shrimp. Nice cart machine jab here, too, Jim. I like that. Oh, thank you. Thank uh, you. Yeah, they didn't ask me anything about the studio. (laughs) (laughs) You were busy with the dental plan. Yeah, exactly. I was working on the dental plan. They said, geez, can we make it? Well, should we ask Lad or any of the jocks about it? No. Why? What do they know about that? (laughs) Hey, let me ask you. Either of you ever been asked anything about a radio station, like what do you, what your opinion on anything? Like that? Yeah, as a matter of fact, when uh, we left that dilapidated old building that Kayla West was in, the one that Howard Cosell said should have been torn down years ago. Oh, yeah. oh the bunker. Yeah, the yeah. bunker yeah. that was built right about well, World 18, War II. Yeah, yeah, it was 1939, <laughs> the original building. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they asked me what I would like to see in the new studio, and I said the the one thing is to not have a wooden floor. Because things fall on it and break. The carts fall, they break. The CD cases fall, they break. We have a massive wooden floor in the studio there. So, yeah, they, they asked me and completely ignored what I said. So. And they asked uh, myself and uh, Rita about the same thing. What would you like? And they said, well, we want a board that we can reach this and this. And we don't want these little buttons that you hit that shut off the speakers. So all the buttons that shut off the speakers are in there. It's like, yeah. Unbelievable. How is Rita, by the way? I always liked her. Rita is the best. If if I have a hero in, in rock radio right now, she's she's toward the top of the list. Uh, she can do so many things. Uh, she's a music director. She runs the board for Mark and Brian in the mornings. She's been a tremendous friend and a great supporter. Uh, the, one of the hard things about all this, for people who, who don't know, when you're asked to leave a place, it's not like, uh, you know, when you get to it, Get your stuff, and it's like pack your crap and get out of here, you know? Generally, by the time the trigger has been pulled and the gun to your head, your locker's been emptied. Wow. But it uh, wasn't... Uh... So uh, I got the word. I was sitting waiting to go on. It was about 10 till 9, Thursday, or 10 till 10 Thursday morning, so I figured I'd be on by about 10 till 11 when Mark and Brian finished. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Joe got that, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sitting and waiting, and, uh, you know, uh, a person walked up to me and said, we got to talk. And uh, I followed them, and uh, it all happened. And then I came back in and had to clean everything out right then and there. And uh, back to Rita, she was uh, sobbing uncontrollably in the studio. And I said to her, if you do that, it's going to turn the button on on me, and I, I can't do this right now, you know. So she kind of turned around, and, and I know it was it was extremely difficult for her. For her, it's the passing of an era mm-hmm. and uh, seeing friends leave. And, uh, you know, it was an emotional moment for everyone. Um, I, in a way, am glad that I took the stuff out during the middle of the day because I literally, Jim, backed my car up to the back door yeah. by the studio, yeah. propped the door open, and started wheeling stuff out. And uh, uh, the accumulation of 15 years worth of stuff. I mean, I finally found my old Cowboys coffee cup that I've been looking Whoa. for for the past 12 years. Yeah. Well, no wonder they haven't won. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, hey, steady. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Steady. Um, you, you accumulate a lot of crap. And uh, I wanted, uh, in a certain perverse way, I guess, that image of... This is what happens. It's not a memo saying, you know, uh, uh, 
they're not here anymore. It's it's blood on the walls and meat on the ceiling and people hurt and reeling stuff out. And I mean, this is the reality of it. It's not this sanitized violence. No. You know, it affects people, and it affected me directly. And grown men weeping in the streets. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and so, you know, you people you get to know. Uh, not only the listening audience, but there are people you work with, like like Rita, and people who work the phones. And you know, Jim, you've been through yeah. this a few well, times. Rita too. Wild was. I just have always liked her as a as a human being, as well as respected her talent. And she is a cut above as yeah. a person and as a radio personality and a professional. Good. And it's people like like her that I will miss the most at, at KLOS. There and there are several people there like that that are just a cut above. And I think a lot of people are probably wondering how Gino's doing. Yeah, I, we should say that he was extended this invitation tonight for personal reasons. He chose to decline. That's his choice and in, uh, in his way of dealing with things. Uh, I will miss him yeah. uh, e- extremely, too. Uh, he, he was a unique talent and a, and a wild man. I mean, you know, there's no getting around it. Uh, in some ways, those of us on the radio, some of us mature a little bit and grow up, and some remain little boys. And Gino was the ultimate little boy, and I think that was part of the appeal. And uh, you yeah. know, God, God bless you, uh, Theodore. I miss you. <laughs> um, you asked uh, Gino's doing well, and I last spoke to him that way. Uh, I've known Bob longer, almost, almost as long as you have, Jim, because Bob almost hired me once, uh, 115,000 years ago. It was probably the biggest career mistake he ever made. Uh, but <laughs> it was but the Gino- way you sent your air check. He sent it with a bowl. I had it, a came in this, it came I in this box with like a 40-pound rock. Yeah, well, I was working construction, and I just filled the box up. With I wanted to get it. Yeah, but, uh, I've known Bob for a long time. Good for you. Don't let this slide. Don't let it slide. What was the significance of concrete? Notice me. See me. Feel oh, me. Man. Really? Well, you know, I was, I was working construction, like I did when I first came out here uh-huh. to L.A., and he was this big program director inside his big office. He gets hundreds of tapes, you know, and... Back then, all I don't know. Gee, I just figured what does this guy really need? A hooker? No. No. Uh, <laughs> a a pot? Pot? no. <laughs> how about 50 pounds of concrete? There you Great. Go. Yeah. That'll work. Yeah. God, you wouldn't believe how much UPS charged for that. But I, <laughs> I was saying, I've known Bob for a long time, and we've been con- buddies and conversing for a very long time. Gino, I worked next to for quite a while, and he was like the brother that my mother never had, thank yeah. God. <laughs> kind of like when I work next to you, Jim. But thank you very again, much. We're back for that, to the Angelus thing. So. Yeah, the Vangelis <laughs> thing. We're back to that. Good. Jeez. Oh, Jesus. You know, I'll tell you what. I, I I don't have the album, but I'll do my best to get the band back together in the studio, oh, re-record dear. the damn thing, and I'll give oh, you a take. Uh, okay, that as long as okay. Will that work? okay. <laughs> Let's take a couple of calls because I know there's a lot of people that want to uh, say hello to you guys. And uh, hello, you're on the air with the uh, BC and Uncle Joe. Yeah. Hi. This is Gregor. How you doing, Jim? Fine, Gregor. Hi, yeah. Hi, Bob. Hi, Joe. Hey, Gregor. Yeah. Do you have a question, or you want to say something to the boys? Well, uh, KLS lost uh, two excellent DJs. They don't know what they're going to be missing. Well, that's for sure. Thank you. That's for sure. Well, Gregor, thank you for calling. I want to get uh, a lot of people on here because I think a lot of people want to say, uh, you know, hello to them. And, again, I, I don't want to use this word goodbye, you know. I, you guys, Thank go, you. Yeah, that's <laughs> see, that's the thing. This is not goodbye. It's just a change mm-hmm. of call letters. And yeah, I, I'd like to let people know we're not dead and buried. That, you know, we are going to be around, and you know, I don't know if it's going to be in Los Angeles or not. I mean, I've got a five-year-old and a ten-year-old. I have to think about that's the first priority. So I need to establish work in some place that I'm going to be happy and they're going to be happy with me. Whether that's Los Angeles or someplace else, I don't know. But we're going to be around. Believe me, this is what we do. Like Steve Downs said, with you on the crossover, it's the only darn thing we know how to do. Yes. You know, I'm completely unqualified <laughs> yes. for any other kind of work. What a pathetic statement about the three of us. It is, isn't uh, it? It really and truly is. You know, what, what, you know, can you fix that thermostat? Yeah, my life is starting. No, to... but I can do a killer segue for you right <laughs> yeah. now if you want. Yeah. No, I can't do the heart surgery. I'm sorry, sir, but if you'd like to hear <laughs> how the Black Crows and the Rolling Stones go together. Hi, you're on the air with uh, B.C. and Joe Benson. Hello, good evening, gentlemen. Howdy. Hi. Um, I just want to say that it seems to me that uh, the format at KLOS has been getting pretty stale for a while. Uh, just seemed like they had a real small playlist, and I wondered if you guys felt that way, if it was frustrating for you with what you had to play there. I've, um... Have you stopped beating your wife yet? Yeah, take it, take it, <laughs> Joe. Yeah, uh, that's one of those. No matter what you say on that one, you're going to be screwed. I I have always enjoyed uh, new music. I like old music as well. Uh, every gen- Jim talked about this at the beginning. He's talked about it many times uh, that I've heard. Uh, every generation, every year, there's new bands come along, 
And uh, certainly the reason, I, one of the things I based my books on when I wrote them were bands that survived long enough. And I get a big kick out of playing music for people and seeing which music that comes out is going to last. And being able to say, hey, I bet these guys will make it. And then, you know, two out of three <laughs> are in jail at the end of the year or something else happens to them like that. And I get a kick out of playing the music and see what happens and where it goes. And playing things, sometimes uh, all of us, all three of us in this room, any jock goes, oh, this song is so good. I know everybody's going to like it. And everybody goes, what the hell was that? <laughs> and if you don't take the chances, uh, you don't know. So I've always enjoyed making the best of what I can out of what's there. I, I'd like to say to this caller that if you put us in a studio and said, what do you think is good radio, it would be different from whatever format yeah. we were working because we all have our own personal taste and individual <laughs> taste and do get tired of hearing da 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 yeah. I mean, you know, there's no doubt about that. But in assuming a job at a radio station, you kind of make a pact with the people there that mm -hmm. you agree that this mm -hmm. is what you're going to do together and you stick with that and you adhere to that. Uh, yes, I had a problem with the music sometimes, but... Uh, we were trying to play the music we thought that most people wanted to hear and that we yeah. could communicate with, and, and that was the agreement that we made with the radio station. And, and I was in a position uh, a little bit different than everybody else in that on Sunday evenings I could play entire albums, and there certainly right. were things on there you never hear any place else, and I was associated with Local Licks for 14 years, playing Southern California bands, some of whom went on to great fame and fortune, and others who I uh, see on a regular basis anyway. Uh, these things work out. You run across people in your life, no matter what your job is, you run across some people who will be with you for a long time, and uh, others that aren't. And, and the kick that we have, uh, Jim is about to jump in on this too, is the music sometimes you get things, you get to play things and it does yeah. good for people. Yeah, you know, the, the thing that I want to say about both of these guys is that within the industry, within amongst the jocks and the people in the industry, both Bob and Joe have reputation as probably the premier musicologist of all of L.A. radio. Certainly their, their knowledge of, of a rock and roll and rock and roll music are far... I mean, I would never, ever go on a Jeopardy with these guys. You know, forget about it. Because they're just the thing that, that they're carrying around in their mind, both uh, Bob has got that reputation, Joe, of course, with uh, Uncle Joe's record guide, and it, it, it is amazing the knowledge that you guys are carrying around and how useful that is, and, uh, and that's what I don't want to see go to waste. Excuse, excuse me, excuse me. Are we still on? Are we taping this? <laughs> Are we rolling tape in there? Okay, you know, now that was pretty good for the rehearsal. Let's go on okay. the air. Thank you. Um, Joe, we're going to play a song you, you wanted to hear. And, uh, yeah, and I don't have anything near as poetic as Bob because he's from Texas and he can do these things better that way. <laughs> uh, you asked, uh, you walked in, you anything you want to hear? Yeah, I'd like to hear uh, Jimi Hendrix because he's one of my favorite artists. He was somebody, certainly, he was on the cutting edge like you were talking about at the beginning. And a lot of things he did, I remember I have, I still have an uncle, but at the time uh, he was going like, that's just distortion. Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it yeah, is. and doesn't it sound good, <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, much of his material has aged very well. And this particular song, I don't remember exactly, uh, There's, we're going to be in a part of it. I don't know if the lyrics are going to tie in exactly what we're talking about here, but I really love the riff. And it's a song that was covered recently, um, I was, uh, Burning Up the Midnight Lamp is the name of the track. If you could do that for me, Jim, I'd be forever your friend. No, nah, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, no. Well, here's the Eagles in yeah. KLSS. Yeah. Yeah, let's go back to the phones. I didn't like that too much. Uh, this is 97.1 KLSX. <laughs> Guitar Center. Hollywood, Sherman Oaks, Fountain Valley, Lawndale, and Covina. Is that annoying Claudia Plague still on the telephone? She is still on the God, phone. It's unbelievable. Sake. And she keeps asking me all these questions. You know, so all she does is she takes articles from USA Today and just rewrites them, puts her name on You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely how all them journalists work, isn't it? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, they don't get any of their quotes for themselves. They just, you know, rewrite other people's stuff. Hello, plagiarism line. You're on the air. So how long do you think my job's going to last after she gets through ripping <laughs> yeah. me in the Times, huh? Yeah, that'll be great. Uh, Jim, we're doing that deep investigative report you always wanted, but it's into your taxes. Thank you, Claudia. <laughs> and sow belly futures. Yeah, well, we got somebody to talk to you, Robert. You're on the air. Bob. Yes. Hello, BC. Yes. It's Bill Hergensen. Billy, Captain Billy, my buddy is, from the Academy the of Radio Captain Broadcasting. Billy. How are you doing? And from KGB in San Diego. Yes. And tell everybody where you work right now. Well, I am the general manager of KMET. <laughs> <laughs> And, right. and, and, and your checks aren't going to clear. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And, and we've changed the locks and the doors. And would you please come to this hotel? Wow. We'd like to talk to you. Uh, tell everybody here in Los Angeles where KMET is <laughs> now. <laughs> having a uh, coronary. It, this has the same effect on Gonzer, <laughs> yeah, uh, by I the way. Uh, wow. KMET is an AM station in Banning, California. 
Uh, that's where I'm the general manager now. We do travel and tourism information for people traveling the I-10 freeway. If you're heading out for Palm Springs, you want wind warnings, we do all of that kind of stuff. We put the station on the air November the 1st, but the call letters came with it. Uh, it turns out the previous owner, uh, a, a fellow by the name of Fred Cote, those in the broadcasting business uh, uh, know this name because he was, uh, and I'm not telling tales out of school, he was recently convicted in a murder-for-hire scheme. <laughs> And <laughs> a respected it, member of the broadcast community. What, what can I say? I, I really am prohibited from making any comments on that. But uh, when JR Broadcasting Partners, my, my fellows, bought the station, the call letters came with it. And the first person that reacted your way was Jeff Gonzer. Yeah. Um, and if I can tell a little tale out of school, I want to say this about Bob and about your shipmate, uh, Jeff Gonzer. Uh, previous to this uh, particular gig, which is the first time, in, I think, in the history of American radio where a general manager shows up in a Grateful Dead t-shirt, jeans, and sneakers! Yes! Uh, that uh, uh, Bob and uh, Jeff uh, very uh, kindly came down and taught at a place called the Academy of Radio Broadcasting, which advertises locally and is the only trade school in Southern California where I was the chief instructor for three years. And when Bob would come down, it was like the Beatles and the Who were playing the coach room. <laughs> it was packed to the rafters. Uh, the students were so excited. And Bob, I want to say it was, uh, those were nights never to be forgotten. And the truth that you told those students was exactly what all of Los Angeles is hearing tonight. I have stabbed in the heart. I mean, Jim, between you and me, I think we've been fired more times than a Civil War cannon. Yeah, amen. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty good. And it's always that, the same. That's what Bob rich. Said, yeah. You know, you pull your car up to the back door, people are crying, reading memos, and you haven't been out of the building for five minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's never ceremonious, and it's never easy. No, the general manager, by the way, is just, uh, you know, calling up to get his tea time for tomorrow. You know, he's going <laughs> golfing. That's it. Well, yeah, exactly. And you always know it's one of those meetings when he says, we got to talk. Oh, by the way, do you have your keys with you? Yeah. Well, you, know, you know why the students reacted like that when I came down? Because broadcasting is the glamour career of the 90s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, uh, the, the students that uh, I hired uh, at my radio station, all of my uh, people are ex-students, including Mark Bartholomew, a good friend of Bob's, who's my program director, and I know they're all listening tonight. Guys, they're, they're the most dedicated young radio guys, and uh, we're going to do things a little different at our station. We're not going to be a bunch of, ah, ah, oh, I can't say the word, beans with A. Automaton? Yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, listen, thank you very much for the call. A great pleasure. I loved your book, and I'd love for you and Guns and the ex-KMET guys to come out sometime. We'll do a little roundtable like this. We'll play little snippets for the people driving to and from L.A. that remember the original KMET, a great <laughs> radio station. Oh, man, that's All very right. kind of you, thanks, and thanks, thanks for having me on. B.C., best of luck. Uncle Joe, we drag raced once at, at Orange County Raceway where we blew up a couple of Z-28s oh. on a bunch of Chevy dealers at a, uh, yeah. uh, a charity uh, a drag race. I don't know Ooh. if you remember that, but all three of <laughs> You guys, uh, everything you said tonight, L.A. Radio, uh, I'm telling you folks out there, you heard nothing but the truth from Thank these you. guys tonight. So brutal, so real. I have just been sitting here just in total open mouth amazement. Every word you've heard tonight about radio industry and about what goes on is absolutely true. I want you to all know that. And I also want everybody out there to know that rock and rollers like me, um, in my 40s, I took 95.5 off my radio yesterday. Goodbye. And I'm looking forward to PC <laughs> and Uncle Joe coming back. <laughs> See you, Jim. Thanks Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's nice to know that KMET is alive and well. Oh, man. To yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Certainly that uh, he was doing some of the things we did at KMET to get that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly has the attitude. Let me put it that way. Amazing. Some of those dealers are still alive, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well. And that they still deliver at home. Yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, uh, I think that's great that he uh, said that uh, about it. And you guys were bringing up something earlier that I wanted to kind of revisit, and that is that even though we know we're in a business and it's a multi-million dollar blah 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 blah, there is a certain emotional attachment that we make that doesn't seem to ever translate other than the performers on the air. Maybe you can address that for me. Uh, it becomes your life, your body, your soul. You really become part of the radio station. The, the word assimilate is the first thing I think of. You, you become part of, and there's a, a pride that, uh, that you carry with you. Uh, even the way things turned out, uh, you know, we're, we're gone unceremoniously. That's the way it works. I said, do we get a last show? They said, what are you kidding? I mean, they just don't do that. That's the way that it happens. Explain that. Now, now, now but wait a minute. You guys are not kids. You've got a great reputation in the business, nationally as well as locally. You're not going to go on. I mean, you're not trashing them now. You could be here just, you know, trashing them to death. You're not going to do well, that. Well, Why well, won't they give you a, an opportunity to say goodbye? We'll get to the trash part later. Just okay, so good, fine. You know, well, <laughs> you know uh, 
part of assimilating and becoming part of a radio station means that, and I think I speak for Joe and I would rarely do this, that we are very proud of the 14 years we spent there. We don't want to come on the air and trash KLOS. We're very proud of what we yep. helped build. The reason they don't want you to do a last show is they are afraid of what you might say and do. Uh, the real reason uh, that they gave me, the, the stated reason, the verbal reason was that we don't want to call too much attention to this. and We don't want people crying and sobbing and this is the last show and, you know, gee, it's terrible. And then the new station goes on the air. Uh, that to me is a little bit of an anomaly because they let go of 10 in the morning till 10 o'clock at night, and that's a pretty dramatic statement. I don't know if anybody noticed that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if they noticed that or not. People don't there's, pay attention. There's some executive thinking. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So th they tend to not, you know, there are a lot of reasons. They, they don't want you to trash. They don't want you to come across as uh, too emotional. They don't want the audience to feel that. You know, they've got their agenda and the things that they want to do, and I wish them good luck for that. That's why this night is so important to me, and, and I certainly thank you for this opportunity yep. to say to people, uh, I will miss the KLOS community switchboarders who came in for free, volunteered their time, answered the phones, went to the events, propped us up when we were deflated and needed the propping up. <laughs> uh, those people are special. They are a breed apart. And, and I'll miss the connection with the audience. Joe and I did yeah. not get a chance to say, hey, this has been great, and God bless you for listening, and tonight is, is an opportunity to do that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well Excellent. said. I'm glad you mentioned the switchboarders, because radio, all radio stations have a cadre of volunteers, and we have them here, and and the, the radio station would not work without them, but if, if you think jocks don't get any respect, try being a volunteer oh, and an man. intern at a radio station. Man. All right, let's go back to the telephones here. Hi, you're on the air with uh, Joe Benson and Bob Coburn. Hi, guys. Howdy. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for so many wonderful years. Um, Joe, I had the pleasure of meeting you when I was with Walden Books. Ah, God and you. you are a gentleman of gentlemen. Thank you. Did you crash any cars with him? <laughs> That's another life. <laughs> um, BC, you, you've you been great. I mean, with Noontime Nuggets and everything, I'm going to miss hearing both of you. Uh, thank, thank you. And I hope there's someone in the powers that be out there in Radio Land, in L.A., that has the wisdom to snatch I wanted to say that I'm one of the switchboarders, and I had a chance of working with both of them, and hands down... Radio in L.A., there's never been two better people, better DJs, just better friends than B.C. and Uncle Joe. And I want to thank them for everything that they've done for me. And I know I speak for um, most of the switchboarders, everything they've done for them also. Well, thank, oh, you. thank you. Very nice. You know, hopefully there'll be more to come. And, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll see, you know. So these guys didn't, like, make you go out and, like, you know, get me a cup of coffee and uh, pick up my dry cleaning, none of that stuff, huh? Oh, <laughs> okay, let's get down to it okay. now. <laughs> we're, we're into the hard copy yeah. part of it yeah. now here. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know. I want to know what the BC wanted in his coffee, and I want to know it now. <laughs> Thank you very much for calling. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Thanks. Bye. Hi, you're on the air with uh, Bob Coburn and Uncle Joe. Hi, uh, Steve Taylor uh, from from Corona. Uh, listen, I just wanted to, to thank both of them and you, Jim, for uh, for all the time that we have spent together as as as, as listeners. Uh, as a consumer of radio, obviously, uh, um, I'm, I'm a little ashamed of what they've done to, to all of you, uh, KKMET leaving there, and of course, uh, the KOS thing uh, for the last couple of days. Um, but I just wanted to thank uh, 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 Joe and, uh, and Bob for all the time that uh, they have spent with me through my life, through the things that I've had to deal with. Uh, and and, and they, have, they have helped me with that, with music and so forth, and it's just been a real pleasure to, to have them uh, have been around. Uh, and, and I wish them all the luck, and I hope that they do find something in Los Angeles. Thank you, Steve. That's one of the reasons we were talking about that earlier. One of the reasons got into radio. One of my favorite things about it is uh, you don't know at the time you're doing it, but uh, certainly in, in the years of uh, doing the seventh day, uh, I've had people come up to me years later and say, hey, remember that time you uh, did such and such with the Eagles album? And generally, I do remember. There's so few mistakes, generally, I do remember. <laughs> but uh, you know that uh, you realize that people really are listening. And I know, Jim, you and I have talked about that at length before people are listening and you, you try to always think of uh, whether you're helping out or trying to help out or 
I try not to piss somebody off along the way there. But and they listen in good times and bad times. You yeah. know, I was on the way to my wedding or, you know, I lost this person in my life. I mean, you're there for every aspect of somebody's life. And that's that's part of why it's a privilege to be on the radio. I want to it, thank, thank you again for giving us the chance oh, to please, talk to yeah, people like please, this. Please, of course. It's uh, it's still the most personal medium when, they, when uh, the powers that be allow it to be. And mm-hmm. uh, you guys are why it is that way and you make it that way. Uh, Bob wanted to hear something new from uh, uh, Tom Petty because God knows you, you you're not able to handle new music, which is why you're here. But uh, you know we're gonna take we're gonna take a stab at it. Us three old farts are going to actually play something new here. And uh, geez, I, I hope it doesn't raise the blood pressure or something. But what did you want to hear about? I, I can't remember, Jim. Yeah, right. Gotta help right. me with. Uh, you know, uh, people that have listened over the years. Joe's got his racing. I'm a ball player. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a third baseman, and uh, you know, I like to charge bunts and throw people out, and uh, you know, go deep in the hole and do all that stuff. And there's there's, there's a phrase, and Joe, don't you say a word there. Don't you step in on that one. There's there's a phrase in in uh, in sports and in, uh, in baseball in particular, and that is to take the game to uh, uh, the next level. And there's a song in the new Tom Petty album called A Higher Place. And I, I would like to see rock radio do exactly that. Take it to the next level and, and go to a higher place. Hey Amen. You're listening to 97.1 KLSX. <laughs> Jesus, Claudia, are you still there? For God's sake, woman, don't get a life. Please get a babysitter or get a life. How you doing, dear? Oh, I'm doing all right. Okay, you're on the air. You do know that, don't you? Yeah, Okay, good. I mean, as being a reporter, you should be aware of these things. I, I am aware. Thank okay. You. Thank you for letting me know. That's okay. Boy, she, you can hear it in her voice. She's pissed, isn't she? <laughs> She's, no, she, fun. You, you're not finding this funny at all, are you, Claudia? Where's the cure for cancer? P- p- what'd you say? Where's the cure for cancer? Where's the cure for cancer? Thank you, Claudia. <laughs> yeah, okay. By that time, you'll be doing, I don't know, what, the home report or something? Anyway, we'll stop here for a minute. Call your travel agent or virgin for details. Uh, this is 97.1 KLSX, the classic rock station. My guest tonight, uh, Joe Benson, a.k.a. Uncle Joe, and B.C., sometimes known as Bob Coburn. And uh, we're here, and it's really, to, I'm not even going to turn your mic on yet so, to, so they can't uh, interrupt me, but this is really, again, a pleasure, uh, except for the circumstances that, that they're out of work. But it's just, it's wonderful to do a radio show with you guys. Now you can go ahead, but it's, it's just fun. Yes, it is. You know, I'm having a good time. I'm out of here. He's got the mic <laughs> control. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is this is total BS. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> if I only if I could only tap into Claudia Poig's home computer, that would just be the ultimate in control, wouldn't it? She did say it was her editor that called me Jim in the paper, though. Ah, it wasn't her. It was no, her no, it's never Claudia. Well, it's yeah. always editor. You know, editors. That's a, a a longer word for program director. There you go. There you go. Let's go back to the phones and uh, there's. And by the way, as you noticed. Every single solitary line has been ringing since I announced you guys are coming in. So it, you got a lot of people who want to say hi to you. You're on the air with uh, Bob Coburn and Joe Benson. Boy, do I hear that about uh, every every line ringing. I've been trying and trying. There you go, buddy. <laughs> well, course, when you've my only line got completely went blank as soon as you picked the phone up. You know, but, uh, when you've only got two lines, though. I mean, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh boy. I thank, thank you, you for that breaking that illusion. I've always told people we had 50 lines into the station. And uh, go ahead. And you're on call waiting, by the way. We have one line and call waiting. Is what we call. Waiting. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, you guys have been talking about, you know, the way that L.A. radio has been going and that kind of stuff. And and uh, and also about how much you guys have had to say to people over the years. You know, uh, I really appreciated the fact that you guys always had something intelligent to say. I always knew that when I would listen to you guys, I would learn something. You know, uh, B.C., you always, you know, you always had that, the history of radio and the, and the idea of, you know, if I wanted to know something about a band or a blues band or, or whatever, you know, I always know that I would learn something new. It's, uh, it's kind of, you know, something that I really appreciated over the years. Um, yeah, yeah, you might you might say I am history. <laughs> <laughs> oh I didn't say that. I think I think KLOS said that. Um, I don't know that a lot of us probably agree. Um, as for as for Joe, I used to listen to Joe on WZMF back in Menominee oh, Falls, Wisconsin. Dear God, Menominee <laughs> Falls. That's where Joe Menominee was. Falls. Yeah. Is that is that a word? It was in a swamp. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, though, it was the coolest station. Thank you. It was the coolest station, and I was just I was just amazed when when Joe came out here. I actually so beat I. him out here by about a year. 
But, I, uh, I left ZMF when my paycheck bounced. So that was it. <laughs> I, you know, probably, probably what happened was that last day that you guys were on the air. That's probably why them paychecks bounced. I, uh, they, that was one time where, where uh, DJs had an opportunity to have that last day. So I, uh, of course, I, I forgot that. Of course, yeah. I was yeah, part yeah. of that. That was not part Listen, of Listen, what's your name? My name's Rick. Okay, Rick, I really appreciate your call. I want to get some, you know, there's okay, a lot of well, people think, calling you in. Know, but... Uh, like I said, I, and Jim, I appreciate you guys, you know, having them on there. Oh, it's our pleasure. I, man, I hope, you know, and, it, and you know, this might that might hit too close to home maybe for KLSX, but I, I have a suggestion. Go ahead. Um, from from uh, 3 a.m. till about 10 or 11 in the morning, seems to me there should be an open slot there, uh, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But, love it. Uh, but like I said, thanks again, guys. And, I, man, I sure as hell hope I can hear you guys uh, locally here. Thank you. Great, Thanks. man. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. What's, where did, how long ago did, uh, oh, what just happened there? Up, 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 up. Hello, you're on uh, KLSX. Uh, psychedelic. Hi, guys. Uh, I'll never uh, ask that um, question again. Got a quick comment and a couple of questions. Uh, okay. First of all, you know, it's beyond me that you're saying KLOS is changing format. They've been playing the same thing the past couple of days. So it's beyond me that they're changing. If they were changing to a radical, you know, something like K-Rock or the new 101, I could understand letting you guys go, but it's beyond me. Anyway, my, a couple of questions is... Uh, what and, and, and by the way, can I just say one thing here that's going to endear me to the radio community? <laughs> yeah, I'd like uh, you need help with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the question that they... Because you brought up how they sound. Uh, how they sound in... in in a, a large part, these guys' hands were tied. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Decisions beyond their reach were made. So why well, are these the guys that are gone when the decisions, which ever, took the radio station whatever direction, were not theirs? They did their job, and they did their job great. They did their job so well, they've been on the air for two decades in this community. But the de the decision makers who are covering their ass with the, with the higher echelons are the ones who made whatever decisions to make the radio station go in that direction. These guys still got a job, and we're sitting here with uh, the talented ones who would know what to do, and they're out of work. I just wanted to throw that little fact out there so we would keep it straight. On, on this check, is, is Lad one day or two? Also, yeah. I'm just wondering, do you guys know what's next for you guys, and also for Gino? And lastly, I was going to ask uh, Jim if he has heard anything from Roger Waters, if what he's doing, I know he knows him. No, he just talks to Claudia Puig now. <laughs> he doesn't talk to me anymore. <laughs> I introduced him to Claudia. That was it. Uh, to, to answer his question about Gino, I don't know what Gino is going to do. I know he's considering options. That's a cliche. I realize that. But we're all doing that right now. That's it's the situation weird. we're it's in. It's weird when you get in that situation. You say, what are you doing? I'm considering options. And it's like, oh, what does that mean? But yeah. that actually is true. Uh, I don't know what he, what he plans to do. He he is a very talented man, and he has a lot of connections with the comedy community here in Southern California, yeah. Yeah. with the five o'clock funnies, and uh, uh, he he's got uh, quite a few things that he can move into. I think it's it's his choice. I think the first thing on his agenda is to go to Tahiti for a couple of weeks. That's Gino's way. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. Good yeah. idea. Well, we wish him well. Yeah. Uh, Joe, you want to play a song? Oh yes. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to play. Uh, I'm not even going to get too much about this song. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It's three guys from Canada. Uh -huh. They started uh, playing music, although sometimes they'll dodge it a little bit, about the same time I started in radio, which is about the same time you two guys did as well. And over the years, they uh, evolved uh, from just a three-piece band playing uh, Thrasher, or just beating things down, doing Led Zeppelin covers and whatnot, into a band that not only played, uh, plays very progressive music, but their lyrics are some of the finest uh, in any kind of music, much less rock and roll. And this particular song here has something to do about uh, is there a fate or uh, do you, is, are things preordained or do you make your own happenings and whatnot. And this would be Rush. Rush and Roll the Bones. 97.1 KLSX. Do you have that gentleman on the phone there, uh, Joe? Joe? Hello, Joe. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do you have him on the phone? Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll just tell him. That, well, we got him, right? Yeah. All right, when we come back. Uh, we have uh, another radio outlaw that we're going to uh, put on the air that uh, uh, you'll love talking to. So don't go away. You're listening to 97.1 KLSX. I'm Jim Ladd. My guest tonight's, tonight is Bob Coburn and Joe Benson. And uh, we have someone else, so don't go away. What are the most wanted houses? Like you take care of your car. I'm Jim Ladd, and this is a very special night here at KLSX because uh, two uh, colleagues and friends of mine are with me right now, Bob Coburn and Joe Benson. 
And Robbie Krieger uh, called in. We were supposed to talk to him at 1030. We will talk to him in just a moment. And thank you, Robbie, for hanging in there because we'll call him back in just a second. But on the telephone with me right now is another colleague uh, in front of these two gentlemen, uh, Gino Michelini. Gino, how are you? Hey, Jim. How you doing? Okay, buddy. Well, I've been trying to call earlier, but I couldn't get through. Claudia wouldn't get off the line. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> well, she never said anything good about us in the past, so why now? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, you know, the electronic media is cool, but that print media, those are the, those are the problem. Yeah. Right there. Oh, the, yeah, they're the real uh, problem. Yeah. Uh, excuse yeah, me, so sir. I've been trying to call in. I just wanted to say uh, the, I heard the guys, and... Uh, uh, that is a big problem, not getting to say goodbye. And uh, Joe, Bob, and, and, and Bob, uh, working with you guys has been one of the joys of my life, and I just want the world to know that. Uh, you guys, just, you meant a lot to me over the last 10 years. It's been the 10 best years of my life. Well, like I said to you when, uh, when you were given your walking papers a couple of weeks before us, I learned a lot about radio and a lot about life from you, Gino. Mm-hmm. I, I can't hear you guys. I've got my radio turned down. Yeah, here, please so. turn down your radio. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to knock you off the air. Rookie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just like my show, Sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll miss those days when we had two for Tuesday and we'd hear foreigner cold as ice followed by foreigner cold as ice. <laughs> Hey, they just had to be two different songs. <laughs> <laughs> it's the disco mix. Yeah, you got that right. Yeah, yeah they just told you to play two songs. They didn't say two different ones. Yeah. I don't see the problem. Hey, they're lucky it was both foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you know, BC, you said something earlier on that uh, that I uh, I tell you something, brother. It's been it, it's this has been the longest I've been out of work in 22 years in this business, and um, I have be- come to grips with some some things that I'd never had had faced before and uh it's been it's not what six weeks now six eight weeks something like i don't know it's a lost track but um your brain gets into a rhythm of thinking and and working on things and uh as far as hearing something or getting an idea for something you want to do on your show or an idea for a bit or something like that you know something you can do to come and piss the people off or whatever you know <laughs> and uh uh I keep getting those ideas, and in my mind works. I'm like, i got to remember that thought because I want to make a point to do something around this, this bit and so forth, something like that. Then you realize you haven't got a show to do it on. Yeah. And I find myself going through bits of, uh, well, we all know how the game is played, the nature of the beast. We've all talked about that, and you said that. But the, the personal anger that you go through when you don't have that avenue to, to go down and, and to, to, to perform and, and do what you do. I went through that. Jim channeled his time well and wrote Radio Waves, which has been well-reviewed and, and read by many people. I'm not sure how I'm going to do mine. And, and I echo what you're saying, Gino. Uh, I haven't had to look for a job in, in 20 years. Last time I got fired at a radio station was KGB in San Diego. I ended up going to KMET in Los Angeles and working with Jim. <laughs> so uh, when that door closed, a window certainly opened. This time, I don't know how it's going to play out. I hope I can use my time as wisely as Jim did. Well, you know, I found a really nice shopping cart. <laughs> and, and I also know where Carrie now lives. And I got a nice sign. I'm going to sit on his on ramp every day. <laughs> uh, Trust me, I think pretty soon he'll be living in the shopping cart. Uh, It'll be all right. Yeah. Well, Gino, uh, it, it's great to hear from you. And uh, I'm glad that you called in. I wish you could have joined us to, uh, tonight. But I'm so glad that we finally got the three of you guys here together electronically anyway, because uh, I just want to tell you all three of you are going to be missed. Uh, so much, but again, I, I'm, I'm just telling everybody who's listening, they will be back. These guys are not dead. It's just that there was a, a you know, a, a bizarre occurrence uh, happened in radio here, and uh, it will all work out for the better. Well, I've been, I've been here at the house, uh, like I said, for the last month and a half, and, and I've had to, to, to monitor my calls, you know, the, ma- the machine that's over there, because you just get to where you're, uh, no offense to anybody, because everybody that, that, that's called that cares and so forth, but you get tired of telling the story. It's true. You get, you get tired of telling everybody you're going to be okay. It's the nature of the beast. And, and what I've been saying to everybody is is I'm not shocked or angered by the situation. I mean, it was 10 years. The the, 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 the surprise is that I got away with it for that long. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing I did when I came in here tonight, I brought two cassettes to get air checks, because if you call me at home, you'll be hearing this show on my answer machine. <laughs> You know, just listen to this. We covered it all last night. All right, Gino, thank you very much. Anything else you want to say before we uh, play a record here? Uh, no, not much, because I, I, I didn't get a chance to, to see my two brothers there, and uh, they, they have been part of my life and a major part of it for the past 10 years. And uh, hearing you guys talking tonight made me, uh, made me think, well, well, 
there's a good chance that the three of us will probably never work together again. Not that I would wish that because that would be a joy unbounded, but uh, you have to think about reality, and we all go our separate ways. And uh, just the three of us, uh, we, we shared something that, that nobody can share. I mean, to be in a major market like Los Angeles for as long as we all were at the same radio station, uh, doing uh, the things that we did, we got away with it, we had a ball, and uh, I personally don't feel that, that I have anything to be sorry for because it was a great ride. I mean, we just had a ball together, and, yeah. and uh, you two guys will be part of me for the rest of my life, and I want you to know that. It was an e-ticket, definitely. Yeah. God, God bless, Amigo. Yeah. Yeah. Gino, thank you very much, and uh, we will all await uh, what the Hand of Fate deals out next. Uh, this is 97.1 KLSX. We'll be right back. Great song, B.C. I wanted to hear uh, Hand of Fate from the Rolling Stones, which fit uh, perfectly in what we're talking about. It was nice to hear from Gino Michelini. And uh, when we come back, we have uh, yet someone else on the line. The uh, former lead guitarist of The Doors, Mr. Robbie Krieger, is on the phone. And we'll be speaking with him right after this. Music. America. You're listening to 97.1 KLSX Los Angeles. I, we just decided, screw it. These guys uh, are going to just stay here for the rest of the show. We're having too good of a time. So uh, my co-hosts tonight are uh, Bob Coburn and Joe Benson. And, uh, I'm in charge of the buffet. Yes, Joe's in charge of the buffet and transportation, by the way. Yes. Um, and on the, the line with me right now is someone that we all know and have played his music forever, Mr. Robbie Krieger. Hi, Robbie. How are you doing, guys? Well, we're we're doing fine. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, the reason that you're calling in, Robbie, is to plug something. How unusual. Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> Jeez. Just call and say hi. By the way, did any of these rock and rollers who we've made billions of dollars for over there, they ever call you up unless they need something? <laughs> Joe, they ever call you up? <laughs> No. Bob, they ever call you to say hello? Never. I, Never. I've only, only had one send a lawyer well, after me. This is for charity, man. Yeah, right. This is for charity. <laughs> you know, but if they got an album out, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> These guys are calling all the time. <laughs> what charity would this be? The Robbie Krieger Sustentation oh, Foundation? I have an album coming out. <laughs> 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 I love Cut it. to the <laughs> chase. How unusual. Oh, man. <laughs> all right. Well, but. Uh, but uh, I, I won't even mention that. No, Robbie, go ahead and mention it. Because you'll pout if you don't. Go ahead. What is it? <laughs> Well, it's a live album that I've got coming out uh, in January. It's called RKO Live. Really? Oh, very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, we'll look forward to that. Yeah, uh, now, good. tomorrow, you're doing something pretty special tomorrow, which is why you're calling in. Well, yeah, I suppose. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to Book Soup, which is a bookstore um, in Los Angeles here. And uh, believe it or not, Gibson has come out with a book. Um, about all of Gibson guitars over the last hundred years. It's called 100 Years of an American Icon uh, by Walter Carter. And uh, I suppose I'm going to be signing uh, some books and giving them away. You know, I took a look at this uh, book. They were kind enough to send it to me. And it is, I'm telling you, both of you guys have got to get a copy of it. It is phenomenal. It goes from the 1880s when Gibson began making mandolins and uh, banjos uh, up through the present day. And they take it in eras, so it's kind of it's kind of like if you like the the special was done on baseball, yeah, you know, right, yeah, documentary. Well, that's kind of like this in print. It's I didn't wonderful. know they had been around it's a nice that long. Book. It's a coffee table sized uh, book. Are, are some of the I don't guitars? Know how much they're selling them for, but uh, I'm sure it's worth it. Are some of the guitars nearly? Like, you're a guitar aficionado. Famous guitars like Robbie's your SG and the. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, Robbie, we're here. We're oh, okay. here. We're pushing the product, Robbie. Don't worry about it. It's okay. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Joe was trying to ask you a question. Go ahead. Uh, do you, is, you, is like your SG in there? Is there a picture of that in there? No, I can't hear Joe. I, all I hear is silence. I'm sorry. Oh, thanks, he, thanks, Jim. Hey, that's okay. I'm, I'm doing the engine. I'm in charge. God, God it feels good. Yeah, I kind of oh, like yeah, the way Jim's it. running the board here. He, he wants to know if... Uh, <laughs> you're, if let me try to translate for Joe. He wants to know if your SG is in there. Um, the SG, uh, well, I don't, I don't know if my particular SG is in there, but, uh, I'm sure they have an SG in there. Did not, no, he's not sure if his, oh, you yeah, heard I that. Heard, okay, I heard, I heard him very well. Thank you, Jim. In fact, I, I'm looking at one right here, which is on the page that, that Chuck Berry is on, page 202. Um, unfortunately, my SGs from the Doors days have been stolen. Oh, really? Oh. When, when did that happen? Oh, a long time ago. Okay. Well, you're going to be at Book Soup uh, 
tomorrow at, at from what, 7 to 9, right? Right. And also Jack Cassidy, formerly of the airplane, will be there, correct? Right. And I believe uh, Angus Young is coming, too. How oh, good. And Walter Cotter, the man that wrote the book. Right. And you'll be signing copies of Gibson, 100 Years of an American Icon. I can testify this is a beautiful, beautiful book. Yeah. And Book Soup is the place to do it. It's the hippest bookstore in L.A. Is it? I haven't even been there yet. Great, Robbie. Try to catch up, okay? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> where, 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 Jesus. Get over to book soup. Robbie, do you know where Sunset Boulevard is? No, I've never been well, okay, there. Okay, good. Well, we'll come and get you, Robbie. <laughs> These rock stars, they, they get driven everywhere. They don't have to remember. <laughs> if No, it's a very cool place. I'm serious, man. You'll love it. It's a very cool place. It's 8818 Sunset Boulevard in West Hollywood. Robbie, yes. thank you for calling. Well, no problem. And by the way, I, I hope you guys uh, will do fine in the future. I'm sure you will. And I hope you all stay together and do something on the radio. Thank you. Thanks, Robbie. He can't hear you, Joe. We'll see you at Book Soup. Thank you very much for calling, Robbie. Bye-bye. Robbie Krieger of The Doors. Spanish Caravan from The Doors. And again, I thank Robbie Krieger for calling in and thank him for having something to plug. Okay. Uh, no, Robbie is such a nice guy, isn't he? And we've known him for a long time. He is. Uh, but he's, he is, as you were saying, a little too hyper. Yeah, I'm a little concerned. Yeah. You know, that sounded like coronary city there to yeah. me. You know, you got, you got to tone it down a little, Robbie. Right. Yeah. Try some meditation, Robbie. <laughs> Lay back a little. I'm afraid to say anything. Nobody will hear me. <laughs> yeah. You've been off all night. That's right. It's, it's well, just a stroke so job. Oh, hell, there's the butt. I'm sorry. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Joe. You know, I just thought Bob had a louder voice than you. I didn't know. <laughs> I thought, hey, that's weird. Okay. I'm just curious why you're hotter in the mix than the two of us are. Hey, Tim, listen, you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what can I tell you? Uh, let's go to the telephones. Hi, you're on the air with BC and Uncle Joe. Hey, how you doing, guys? Good. Good. Jim Ladd, you know you're a hell of a guy. Well, I don't know about that, but thank you. I followed your footsteps at Long Beach City College. Oh, good. The Voice of City College we had there. Yes. And a very ironic thing happened here. I, almost a year to the day, I talked to Bob Coburn at the day before Thanksgiving parade, and I'd asked him about you. And oh. it seems just so ironic that here we are almost exactly a year away. He's on the show with you. Uh-huh talking about what's going on in this Los Angeles radio. Oh, God, what did I say about yeah. him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let you off the hook, Bob, but yeah, go ahead. All right, yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's an interesting thing because um, radio, look, there's nothing more competitive in the 90s than radio, but the three of us, and Gino as well, who called in, uh, folks from our generation came to radio for really different reasons other than uh, making money which was the, probably the only smart realization we ever had was <laughs> don't get in to make money or have security. Yeah. But we there it's all tied up with a lot of stuff of why we got into radio. And, and I think that there's a, a certain bond that we all understand. Yes, we have to compete. Yes, we have to win. But we can maintain friendships throughout that, which is... That's, and and, and yep. another thing, Jim, the... Uh, I lost kind of my train of thought here. I'm nervous talking. You, you are following in um, his footsteps. Hello, Robbie. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's stuck too. Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, anyway, good luck to everybody there. I'm sorry to hear this. Uh, how this happened? Because I, as a listener, I don't know if you guys kind of forget this, but we we hear you every day, and we 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 think of you as family. Thank you. And and like the the blues on Monday, it's going to be sorely missed. And the seventh day, it'll be hard to go go anywhere on a Sunday and come home at night and not have those uh, albums being played for me. Thanks. Gonna miss it. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. That's a very yeah. nice thing yeah. to hear. And uh, uh, family, I think, is the word. Good for you, man. Good call. Hi, you're on the air with uh, BC and Uncle Joe. And Jim Lynn. Yeah, hi, Jim. I just wanted to ask Joe and BC that, you know, you're talking about demographics and economy and everything like that. I was just wondering how institutions fit into radio now. I mean, people that last at a station for 15 or 20 years as opposed to, Somebody like a Howard Stern or Mark and Brian who are, you know, institutions in themselves, but they're not music-based. And I'm just wondering, is there a future in, in long-term employment in radio? Uh, there's never been long-term employment in radio. And uh, we are the, okay, we are the, uh, the something real different about it. A normal career for a DJ, now you've spoken to the school, Bob, you can verify a normal career is like three or four years. And to be at one station... Uh, Bob, you were at uh, KMET for like five years, weren't you? Yeah, five. How long were you there, Jim? Nine. Nine? Yeah. And uh, to be someplace as we have been here, it's... Uh, it's very rare. We're all very fortunate. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's the unusual thing. The, the, the career for a person in radio in Los Angeles is about that of a running back in the National Football League, and the average is about two and a half years. 
Yeah. You know, you get beat up, you get run over, you get uh, game dayed out and that type of thing. And but they get paid and they have cheerleaders. That's right. Okay. And so. they get paid more than we do. That's well, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least, at least they play actual games as opposed true. to other sports. <laughs> and there's always, and you can tell the winner and the loser. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's yeah. true. That's true. All right. This is ninety-seven point one KLSX Los Angeles. Hi, you're on the air with uh, Bob Coburn and Joe Benson. How you doing? Good. Um, you know, I haven't really listened to KLOS all that long, but my husband got me into it, and just recently he had been totally complaining about all the new music that they've been playing, and it was it was starting to irritate him. It really was. And um, I'm gonna I'm I've gotten to Seventh Day and I really like that and I'm mm-hmm. gonna miss that and even before I listened to KLOS Night and Day, um, I would I would turn on the Five O'clock Funnies, mm-hmm. you know I mean I would listen to every other station in the world or just tapes or whatever but Five O'clock came along and I would turn on the Five O'clock Funnies and that's it's gonna be boring. You know? <laughs> I was listening to it briefly earlier today and it just. I called in to request some music, and the DJ was a jerk, so. Um, you guys are going to be missed, and I'm going to be praying for you guys, and I hope you guys get together and stay together and do something with it. Joe and I are getting married after the show. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll have Bad. alternate days when one guy's a jerk and the other guy. Is like that. <laughs> That's right. I, I appreciate your uh, talking those kind of things, though. Uh, we were discussed, I think, throughout the evening. It's been mentioned a couple of times. People listen mainly for the music, but the DJs are not necessarily the frosting on the cake. But you're the one that makes everything go together different. And you put everybody puts uh, anybody who's worth their salt puts their show together in a different way. And your personality comes across the way the segues work when you come on, how you talk about things, how many words you use, how you do this. And uh, people, it's nice to hear that people do pick that stuff up. And for somebody to come in and pick up a program that's been running for 14 years or 10 years or whatever, that uh, another jock really cut his teeth, uh, your life, you know, my life and blood went into that, and Bob, same way, our life and blood, one of those programs, somebody else to come in and pick it up, well, that's nice. Good luck with it. And, and, the, and the 5 o'clock funnies will continue at KLOS. Only Long Paul, who's the new afternoon guy, will be doing it, and it will sound different. It will take on Long Paul's personality. Whether you like it or not remains to be determined, and uh, I'm, I'm curious to see what he does with it. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's. Get, there's so many people, I mean, and this is a real testimony to you guys, every single line uh, that we have coming in here has been ringing since uh, 8 o'clock this evening, uh, and they all want to talk to you, and I just think that's wonderful. Hi, you're on the air uh, with uh, uh, Joe and Bob. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Fine. Um, who am I speaking to? Jim? You're speaking to all three of us. Oh, hi. But speak right up Jim, to Bob and, and to Joe. Jim's okay, interpreting this is, this is for Bob and, and Joe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if, if, you, if you've ever heard of the whiskey. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> O- old anyway, granddad's my favorite. In a, in a Is this a program director calling? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I saw a long, long time ago in the backstage dressing room something that was written up on the wall, and I won't say who wrote it, but it, it was, this is just this is for you guys. And it's people come, people go. God save the rock and rollers from the pits that cringe their path. And I'm oh. just, you know. Well, I know that's much too eloquent for any of us to have written it. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you think? I think it's cool. Was it all spelled correctly? <laughs> <laughs> well, you recited it wonderfully, and yes. we thank you for that. Okay. All right, thanks okay. for calling. Okay. Might be a good time to play the song you wanted to hear. Ah, very good, Jim. All right. Right. Hey. Hey. Let's yeah. rock. Okay, this is ACDC. We're here with uh, Bob Coburn and Joe Benson. You're listening to 97.1 KLSX. AC, DC, I'm the girl's God rhythm. Lord have mercy. Nice lady that called in. We'll stop here. We'll do some business. And when we come back, we'll uh, once again be talking with uh, Bob Coburn and Joe Benson. I can see all of you calling in. We're going to take as many calls as we can. They're going to stay right uh, up until midnight. So if you're trying to get through to uh, uh, say your piece, please hang in there, and we will get to you as quickly as possible. You're listening to 97.1 KLSX. I know. I know. You're going to tell me you never watch TV.